Enough, 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 enough. I wanted to say another word, but Gina here, so I'm gonna try to restrain myself. Cause y'all already know I have, I have a cussing issue. Hey, kids accept it. So, hey, so right now they say we're having problems on YouTube, but I see somebody joining us on YouTube. I see somebody with us on Periscope. Shouts out to you. See somebody out there on Giami Journey on Facebook. Um, it's still sending data to LinkedIn. And we online we on we online on our other YouTube channels. So I'm gonna have to go on and take one of those YouTube channels off. I don't know what's going on. And uh, you wanna see yourself, you right there. Alright, so um well no, because that's uh that'll take your attention off what you need to have your attention on. So, of course, y'all know this is Giami Journey. Well, first off, y'all know y'all are in the Congregation of the Mighty. Y'all know y'all in con- this is the Congregation of the Mighty, where your hustle builds muscle, the home of the stubborn minority. This is, tell them, Jeannie. Giami Journey Media. <laughs> Of course, you know this is the heart of simple production, and this is Folk Tales for Grown Folks. And well, we strive, strive, strive to blow up your old paradigm. All the time. Family, so look, I was hoping to have a major announcement for you tonight. Didn't come through, so we're going to have to hold off. I'm trying. But I'm burning up. But we do have to invite you out to the GNJ Mall. Be on the lookout for the commercials. Please like and share because we want to get as many people in the house as we can. Because I'm so tired of people talking to me like, we know, we didn't get that many people out to the mall. And, and uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, the fuck you talking about? You know what I'm saying? See, the family, we. We got to, we got to embrace every small step towards success. Every new person we see at the mall is a potential another six people coming. And we have the facility, so let's go on and do it, right? Right? And I ain't talking about, because I don't want nobody out there taking a person. I ain't talking about nobody on on, on the team. I'm talking about other people, you know what I'm saying? Because I get whispers in. Y'all be whispering, right? You know, y'all know I get super hearing, or or I could be having an illusion, cause y'all know I was it was rough on me for those those three dry days, so I could be crazy. I, but I, come on, Gina, we got to be able to see if somebody calling. Lines are open. 
we're going to we're going to discuss the proverbs. Also, um, also, it was something else that I needed to announce. Uh, G and J Mall, June 29th, 12 to 6 p.m. Set up for vendors is at 11 o'clock. Get there because a lot of people is trying to trying to get in those spaces. So I mean, because the vendors are responding, and I want to I want to get a, get the vendors a round of applause, Gina, if you would. Could you get the vendors a round of applause? It's so good to have an engineer right here. This is my engineer right here. Yup. Yeah. Vendors, hang in there because we got something big coming for you. And I think, well, I don't know. Let me let me just hold off because the way we was going to have it set up this time, but Destiny would not allow it. Me, me and the tribe, we're going to sit down. We got to sit down. And we got to recalibrate, recalculate so that we could go and do this thing right. Because I'm thinking, because Sister Navita on the line, Sister Navita, I think. We might be able to do what you suggested because somebody else suggested that on team too. We might need to push it to um, the week after that. Give a round of applause to this. You want to do that? Go ahead. Go ahead. Give a round of applause. That's that engineer. That's that engineer, right? Also. Also, make sure that you check out the June newsletter. The newsletter is a work in progress. We will be we will be improving it. I bet you this is Navita calling the cuss cuss her brother out. Oh, Sister Navita. Oh, they it's Lady J. Speaking of that, Sister Navita, I thought you was gonna post that picture up because Sister Navita uh, uh, clowned me today, and that shit was hilarious. And I think the world should see it. <laughs> It's floating around my office. It's floating around my office. But the only one, the only thing is, Sister Navita, on the one with the plate, you need to put on there, where my reparations? Oh my That's all I want. That's all Brother High Tim requests. And then we could blast that. We, we could make a commercial with that one. We could, we, we could blast that all over. Where my reparations? Did you have, did you have one your sandals? No, I ain't got them on yet. It ain't, um. Actually, it ain't really been sandal season for me. I don't know if it's been cool. So you got to understand, I'm, I'm still on the fast. So I don't know if it's been cool or or my blood iron is low. So I don't know. I don't know. So um, uh, something else. Anything, any other announcements that I need to make? You got an announcement for something, Lady J? Nope. All right, so we're going to jump right into this... Uh, this folk tale, family, and this one, this one was difficult. Let me tell you why. Because it kind of spoke, it's kind of like a double speak, and it's confusing. And so when I went back and did the research, I found out that there's two different versions of the same story, which we run into. But, although they was translated, and this, this is where... This is where the importance of translation come in, coming into play. Although they come, they was translated from the same document. They was translated by two different individuals. And the two different individuals had different outtakes on it. So this is where culture comes in and plays a, a major role. Because oftentimes you have to, you, when you're doing things, you do them. If it is your culture, you do it to benefit your culture. So when you're translating, you have to be translating information that to to the benefit of your culture. If you are if you are building a building, you build the building to the benefit of your culture. All right. So I mean, so we have to be very clear on that. Culture is a major piece, and is one that has been. There you go, Sasha. Yeah, what you want to do? Get on. All right, come on, get on the show, baby. Culture is a major piece that we often overlook when we're talking about education, when we're talking about, no, 
No, I take that back. We don't overlook culture. What we do is we train our children to be assimilated into somebody else's culture and to place somebody else's culture higher than theirs, right? And, and then what's even worse, sometimes we even go into this whole universal spiel that is not good for where we are. All right, so that's another Brother Hot Tim's rant. So we got two major announcements, right? I have one that's coming this near, right? Then we're going to, at least, at least it ain't going to be major at first, but as it start building up and I start doing the work, it's going to be major. Now, then we got another major announcement coming for July. So I want y'all to be ready. I want y'all to be ready, right? Because it's... Give, 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 give Jamie Jane a round of applause. Due to your support, we, it's real life here at Giami Journey, family, and I'm, and I'm home, my baby, I'm riding home, we're doing big things here, and y'all are able to, now, four, so I got two girls, two that don't give a damn about their dad fasting, so the questions that's going, coming home, is about food. Uh, what's your favorite fast food restaurant? And every dad knows that's nothing but a hint. So I say, uh, well, my favorite fast food restaurant was a restaurant called Burrito as Big as Your Head. But they closed down. You oh. lied. <laughs> oh. You lied. I said, but my favorite restaurant now is Peter Pit. Oh. Taco Bell. As we drive by Taco Bell. Chipotle's. As we drive by Chipotle. No. Peter Pit. And we ain't nowhere near Peter Pit. Right? So I'm like, come on. Now stop trying to throw the hands. That ain't. Y'all know. Burritos big as your head is not even a thing. Man, listen. You. That burritos. Your mama had a couple of them before they closed. Vicky, was it a place called Burritos as Big as Your Head? It was called La Bombas, and the burritos were literally as big as your head. Now, no. in my college days, I used to, well, in between, you know. Yeah, it was some up together to fool me. No, yeah. I'm trying to tell you. Look, burritos as big as your head. Those that remember, La Bombas, oh my God. La Bombas, um, um, burritos. Were that big and about that thick, whether you got beans or steak, and it was the bomb. Lady J back on the line. What's up, Lady J? I'm just chopping it up a little bit. Just chopping it up. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, I need the I need the thumbs up. Whether y'all can hear her out there. Um. So. Y'all ain't, there's no more fundraiser for Simba coming up anytime soon that you need to announce? Um, the only other thing that um, I do every year is just $10, 10 days of giving. So I every day reach out to 10 friends, ask them to um, pledge $10 um, leading up to camp. Ten, it, now, what do you call that again? Everybody listen up. It's, uh, it's 10 days of giving and you're just every day contacting 10 friends and asking them to donate $10 for 10 days. Okay. So the individual donate for 10 days or you're going to ask 10 different people for 10 consecutive 10 different days? people for $10. For ten days, girl, you should have made. You should have made that a twenty-one day challenge, and started on a mojo oh. and worked your way for twenty-one days. Because I know you got more than two hundred ten friends. You're a very popular person. Probably, I wouldn't say that. Well, I mean, so yeah, that's what I've done. I've done that every year for the last couple I years. Don't know what it is. So that's all I have remaining. 
All right, if those out there on Spreaker, if those out there on Facebook, can y'all tell me how does this speaker system sound with Lady J? Let me see if I can turn it up on this because, you know, my hearing is... All right, so thank you, Sasha. I appreciate your moral support. All right, so pass me the folktale book. All right, so I'm going to read this folktale, but we're going to explore it because sometime it requires us to do some digger deeping. So this is, you gone? Yep. So this is one of those folktales that require us to do some digging, right? And now we got to clean off the rocks and all that. So we, we done found this folktale, but I want y'all to listen to the twist in the message, right? Depending on the version. An eagle was once captured by a man who immediately clipped his wings and put him into his poultry yard with the other birds. At which treatment the eagle was weighed down with grief. Later, another neighbor purchased him and allowed his feathers to grow again. The eagle took flight and pouncing upon a hare, brought it at once as an offering to his benefactor. A fox seeing this exclaimed, Do not cultivate the favor of this man, but of your former owner, lest he should again hunt for you and deprive you a second time of your wings. Now listen to that. So, I'm like, when I read that this morning, I, I, I hope y'all heard a little bit of confusion with me because I'm like, Real life here, Jeremy Jenny. What happened? What happened? What happened? She slipped in the water. Okay. Did she break something? No. All right. It's real life here, Jeremy Jenny. All right. All right. Here we go. So we go to. So I read you one version. So here's another version. This one is shorter. An eagle was caught and had his wings clipped. A neighbor bought the eagle and let his, let his wings grow out. A fox cautioned the eagle about paying tribute. Period. Favor those who do you kindness. Which I kind of we I I, I could kind of disagree with that, especially for the one that that they um the one that I just read. Now I just read y'all the Townsend version, so I won't go through the Townsend version. But let's go. To the JBR collection. It says it's called. And this one is called the eagle and a man. But it's the same story. A man caught an eagle in a snare. He cut his wings close and kept him chained to a stump in his yard. A kind hearted father. Seeing the melancholy looking bird. Took pity on him. And brought him. And bought him. He was now well treated. And his wings were allowed to grow. When they had grown again sufficiently for him to fly. The father gave him his liberty. The first thing the bird caught was a fine fat hare, which he brought and gratefully laid at the feet of his benefactor. A fox looking on said that he would have done better to try to make friends with the first man who had caught him, which makes, which I, I can hear, I can hear a little bit more sense in that one. And who might perhaps catch him yet again, rather than with the second from whom he had nothing to fear. Now, I disagree with that, but hold on. Your advice may do very well for a fox, replied the eagle, but it is my nature to serve those who have been kind to me and to let those who choose to be governed by fear. Yes. Wow. All right, so now let's let's move to the less estranged version because this, this is where it gets crazy, right? A man took an eagle, pelted his wings, or pelted her wings, and put her among his hens. Somebody came and brought this eagle, and presently new feathers, and, and um, presently new feathered her. She made a flight of the hare, trusted, and brought it to her benefactor. A fox perceiving this came and gave the man a piece of good counsel. Now the fox, at first, in the first three versions we read, no, first two, because it was two versions where the fox actually spoke to 
the ego. Oh, this one, man. the fox is speaking to the man. A fox receiving this came and gave the man a piece of good counsel. Have care, says Renard, of putting too much confidence in his ego, for she, for she'll go sneer, she'll she'll for she'll go nearer one time or el oh damn this old English hold on. Have care, says Renard, of putting too much confidence in this ego. For she'll go near one time or other else to take you for a hair. Upon this advice, the man plumbed the ego once again. <sighs> so, ladies and gentlemen, we got some work to do. To, we got some work to do today. We got a discussion right here because it is given. Advice that in one way is sound, but in another way is dangerous, and in one way, un for, to, for to me, it's kind of un. I, so it's, it's like somebody's culture is, is springing up out of this. You understand what I'm saying? Other than, other than just Aesop, you got something you want to share about it, or do you need me to read something else? Um. No, I just think uh, I think that line where it says um, it says your play, your advice may do very well for a fox, um, and so it made me think: what is a fox's character? You know what I'm saying? Foxes are are usually cunning, right? Mm -hmm. So it may be in their nature to um, try and charm. You know, the the cat, right? Right. Um, but I think that the um, the ego is saying that's not its nature. The ego said it's not my. You know what I mean? He said, but it is my nature to serve those who have have been kind to me, and to let those who choose be governed by fear. Let chose let those who choose to be governed by fear be governed by fear. So um, now that was dope. That and that one is for those that want to look that up. That's the JBR collection. But the Townsend, let's hit on this Townsend one first. Then we can move through them. So this is the one that says an eagle once captured by a man who immediately clipped his wings and put him into his poultry yard with other birds. At which treatment the eagle was weighed down with grief. Later, another neighbor purchased him and allowed his feathers to grow again. The eagle took flight and pouncing upon a hare, brought it at once as an offering to his benefactor. A fox seeing this exclaimed, do not cultivate the favor of this man, but of your former, former owner, lest he should again hunt for you and deprive you a second time of your wings. Now listen to the fox advice. So the fox, oh, okay, I thought you had hung up. So listen to that fox. No. Listen to that. And I want to tell you. Go ahead. It makes this sound where he's saying something about being governed by fear. Because he's saying if if your actions are uh, predicated upon what someone did did to you, if you're doing this out of fear that he'll come after you, that's what that's what's kind of ruling you. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like now you're in freedom and you're so afraid of losing your freedom. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. You paying attention to the wrong. You possibly paying attention to the wrong thing. Yeah. Because the ego, yes. the ego, because uh, because remember in one of these translations, the ego was set free, and he brought back the gift to the man. Now we got because we're gonna have to look at that end where it switches because that's, I mean that that's critical for our conversation because that last one. The way they ended was was crazy, man. I mean that, but I understand that. So, the ego being grateful upon being released or being able to allow to be able to grow his wings, because if you allow an ego to grow his wings, he's not gonna stay in the chicken yard. We know this. So, so this this man 
got this eagle, nursed this, basically nursed this eagle back to health, and allowed this eagle to be an eagle. The eagle flew out and caught a rabbit and brought it back to him. And the advice he received from the fox was an advice of fear. Why are you taking care of this dude when you need to be fearing the other dude? So you need to go and try to make friends with the other dude. And the eagle's like, you know, I, you know, boom, I ain't, I'm not on that. I'm not on that. Yo. Go ahead. This sounds like a pretty intense proverb. I'm just kind of tuning in. I've been, I'm sitting here chilling with Sister Vita. We, uh, grilling it up. Got some, got some vittles popping. Now, oh, now, man. now it's time, now it's time for, now it's time for the, for the main course. What's this, what's this, this proverb on here? All right, so the folktale is called An Eagle and His Captor. And basically what's going on, now we got, because the first story didn't make sense, so I had to do further research on this one. And let me go down and read what, what, what this say. Um, it says, Note, this combination shows how translations may vary. These were from the same original, but the two other translations relate two completely different fakes for the eagle. So, in the first one, we have an eagle that is caught by one one captor, one slave master, he's plucked and he put in a chicken yard. The eagle is depressed and overcome by melancholy. And another farmer come over and look at him, takes him, and allows him to grow his feather or allows him or her to grow their feathers back. And they take off and fly. And bring, and the first thing that they jump on is a hair, and they find a nice fat hair, and they bring it back to the guy that nursed them back to health. A fox who saw this said, Yo, ego, you don't need to be giving food to the guy that helped you. You need to be giving food and trying to make nice with the guy that enslaved you. Now, the next story, which is another translation from the same document, talks about um, the man going down the same line all the way down to the fox. So the new, the man grabbed the man. The, the man took care of the uh, eagle, allowed him to, to, to heal himself. A fox looking on at the uh, f the first thing the bird caught was a fine fat hare which he brought and gratefully lay at the feet of his benefactor. Now, in this story, they say that the benefactor released the bird and let the bird go free. A fox looking on said that he would have done better to try to make friends with the first man who had caught him, and he might perhaps catch him yet again, rather than with the second from whom he had nothing to fear. And the eagle responds, Your advice may do very well for a fox replied the eagle, but it is my nature to serve those who have been kind to me and to let those who choose to be governed by fear be governed by fear. Now, I added that, that last part to, to, to help the translation. Now, the last one. Now, listen to this one, because this is where it gets crazy. So, we talk about the same Mingo. We talk about the first man that caught him. Chained him but this time, he chained him to a stump. Another man noticed that the eagle was depressed, bought the eagle, and basically nursed him back to health. So, and it says, to get to this point, it says, she made a flight at a hare. He trusted or caught it and brought it to the benefactor. A, po a fox perceiving this came and gave not the eagle advice, but he went and talked to the man and says, have care says Renard, so he's quoting something from European culture, says Renard, of putting too much confidence in his ego, for she'll go nearer one time or other else times to take you for a hair. Upon this advice, the man plumbed the ego once again. Plumbed? Yeah. That means he, he basically crippled him again, so he couldn't fly. So you got it? Long discussion. Confusing, but enlightening. Because it's some good advice, 
and it's some bad advice. Because the ego, let me ask this question. Should the ego follow the fox's the follow the fox's advice? It sounds to me like the ego is the only one that really that really um that really has that um the ego is the thing to be driven by integrity. Everybody else, are you can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. It, it seems like the ego is driven by yeah. integrity, but the rest of yeah. them are driven by uh, fear. The fox is driven by fear. The man got uh, convinced to be guided by fear by the, I don't know the word to use for the outside source that called him, came and told him that the ego was dangerous. But the ego seems to purely be driven by integrity. Mm. Mm. Now, but that brings up a strange, uh, uh, a sad point. What happened? Because in that last story, what happened to the one that was full of integrity? In the last story, the ego who was full of integrity ended up plumbed again because of the fear. You know I mean, what I'm saying? Yeah, integrity integrity is not it's not respected, I guess. It's it's, it's it kind of puts you in a vulnerable state because those that are willing to act outside of integrity in a sense have the upper hand, I guess. Well, now now let me say this. Because this is, this is where we get into the discussion, once again, going back to culture. Because one of the things I, I try to stress to people is that you can't go into another people's environment, another being's environment, and expect their ways to be your ways. You understand what I'm saying? Because what is integrity for the fox? Was the fox, really, because if you go back and you think about it, was the fox acting as a fox? Because integrity basically means whole. Was the fox acting as a whole fox? Uh, was was from all the folk tales we had about foxes, was this a behavior that you can actually expect from a fox? Were captors acting as captors? I mean, foxes are known for being fly, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because they're not the biggest, they're not the strongest, but they have to survive. So if Our they foxes really like that in the wild. Like oh yeah, crazy. if they if they take on if if a fox, let me a uh, quick story. My grandmother had a poodle that didn't know it was a poodle, a toy poodle. Frenchy thought he was the roughest dog on the damn block. Now, I'm old enough before animal control came in and dogs used to run in packs when they got in heat. They'll come over on your on, on, on trash night, knock over the trash cans, and they would party all night when it, when a female dog was in the heat. They'll be running around partying, knocking down trash cans, getting food, partying, having sex. And if you got caught the wrong place at the wrong time with one of those packs, you were, you were fucked up. Now, Frenchy thought he could run with the pack. Frenchy thought he was a 200-pound Rockwaller, and he went out there and started messing with dogs as if he thought he was 200 pounds. Now, Frenchy got torn in half. I found his head in one part of the field, found his body in another part of the field. The point of the story is, because Frenchy didn't act like Frenchie. Frenchie got split in half. If Frenchie would have known his place, if Frenchie would have acted as Frenchie, so what I'm trying to say, if a fox was to go into the wilderness and try to act like a goddamn wolf, they wouldn't survive. You understand what I'm saying? So so the, the, the rule system in nature for the wolf is different than a wolf, the, the rule system for the fox. And it's different for the rule system for the ego. And it's different for us. 
and it's different for as it's different for other people because these are these are cultures. But I'm sorry, go ahead. Y'all quiet. What's going on? Did I talk too much? No. No, I'm watching it on uh, I'm watching it on the T V and I'm listening to it on the phone. It's a different time, so I'll be having to wait for you to <laughs> Right, right. Don't here, just, do you if you on the phone, just go on and, and focus on the phone because the phone is always gonna be ahead because that conversation behind is gonna take your mind. See? And turn that shit down. You're yeah, confusing me. I'm, I'm thinking I'm talking to myself. Y'all know I'm over here hungry. I'm like, shh, I'm like, damn. I'm hearing voices. I hear a heavenly voice. All right. So, so, huh? I'm sorry. I think that um, this picture is hilarious. Oh, Navita sent it to you, or she posted it up? It's not here on Facebook. Oh my God! Did she at least put? Out where my reparations at? Not on this one. This is seven uh, hours up. God damn it, Navia. All right. God damn it. All right, but now, so here we go. So, the, the, so looking at this, all I'm saying is, I think this is a description of culture clash. You gotta call baby. You know what I'm saying? Because we got different cultures. Clashing here. We got the fox culture and the fox and the eagle culture, the eagle culture and the man culture. And even a different culture between the men. Because one man was able to be driven to act and think like a fox. I think it's pretty clear too that the American experiment is is, is not working. I mean three hundred million I mean I, I find myself talking about that kind of regular kind of often like with the idea of tribe being, you know, like no no bigger than 150 people, and like 150 people may be even being a big ass tribe, but then tribes working together, like with each other, compared to having this experiment where it's 350 million people that supposedly are under the same banner. Mm. What? Well, yeah, but now you got to remember, there's 50 banners, and then within those banners. There are, like, for example, in Ohio, there are city banners, and even, and to divide even the cities, there are county banners. So, actually, you, America is kind of based on a tribal system. Although, at the same time, I can, I, can, I can freely move between any of those banners, though. Yeah, but if you, if you do the wrong thing in the wrong place, you're going to get fucked up. You know that, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You've been to Milwaukee, nigga. You've been to Chicago. You know what I'm saying? It, you know what I'm saying? We family. But there's a difference. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? He just with us. So you can only imagine with um, amongst all these different groups. And then we and then all of us are being indoctrinated in a certain way. So there, there, there's a benefit, but then there's a downside to what you're saying. Is I mean, to to I understand the downside that you talk about, but understand that America is broke up, already broke up into tribes. We're the only ones that's possibly not acting in that tribe. We're not. We we still, in many cases, many of us are still the ego trapped in the farmyard. Not that we just, not just we, not just that we're pretending like the story of the ego that thought he was a chicken. It, many of us know that we egos, but for some reason, we have not been given the time to grow the feathers to be able to escape, or the benefactor hasn't come to at least assist us and unchain us. Because there's no way you can hold a. I mean, how you gonna hold a? How you hold an ego in the chicken yard? A full grown ego in the chicken yard. With, whether he could fly or not, that's that's a bad situation for them chickens. Yeah, he's gonna eat some chickens. Oh yeah, he's gonna be eating some damn chickens. You understand what I'm saying? And 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 if you look at our situation, it's very similar. We're trapped without our wings. It's not that many of us don't know that we're eagles. It's the fact that we. 
uh, the, the wing, the very wings that we need to fly have been clipped. And we're sitting up in here, boom. You know what I'm saying? But then some of us operate on that fear model that the fox has put into us or whispered in our ear. Man, you need to go and give your rewards. Or if you are able to fly, you need to go and try to make friends with that one over there. Because you don't got nothing to fear from this one over here. Rather than just being an ego and say, I'm ruling the skies. I'm putting myself in a situation where I ain't got to worry about neither one of them. I'm going to salute. The one that does help me, and you know what I'm saying, watch the one that didn't help me. I know I need to look out for him now. See, because living in the wild is, is all about being predator or prey at all times. At all times. And that's what one of the things we got to understand as a people, because freedom doesn't mean that you don't have problems. Freedom doesn't mean that you don't have people try to take your freedom. Freedom doesn't mean that you don't have problems and that you don't have arguments and that you always have money. Freedom means that you have you you are constantly having to grind. This is what it means. It's not, it's, it's, freedom ain't free. Freedom ain't free. Nor easy. Nor lucrative. For the mat for for the, for a mass amount of us, it's not. But we have to understand, it takes hard work, dedication, persistence. And that's what, that's, I'm going to say some shit that probably might offend some people. I remember, I, I'm actually about to go ahead and open up this little Pandora's box, because I had said something a while ago that I actually don't even necessarily agree with. I'm about to try to tie this all together. My phone might die in the process. Um, I had said a while ago that women should be heard, seen and not heard, that I think that I said that there was some relevance to that. When I come back, I thought about it, and I didn't have an opportunity to talk about it. What I realized was that men should learn, I think, okay, I don't like the word should. I think historically, men knew that they communicated best among men, and women communicated best among women. I was just, like, just this past Saturday, my little cousin graduated, I can't believe she 18, graduated from high school. I'm old as hell out here. Remember when she was born? Um, Yo, she man. had a graduation party. <laughs> she had a graduation party. We went to Sharon Woods. So I was with my little cousin, my, uh, another one of my little cousins. We, she wanted to walk on the trail. So we walking around on the trail. We passed this family, of, this Muslim family. And all of the men were sitting together and all of the women were sitting together. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I said that to highlight the relationship between the men and the women in the village. Our women are under the impression that they're independent, but the only reason they're independent is because men protect them. But the men that they quote unquote are being protected by are their enemy, the police. Black women think they can pick up the phone and call the police like they're calling their ally. No, black men are the only ally of the black woman. There is no other ally for the black women. The police ain't your fucking ally. They're the ally of the of the, of the dollar, mm. and the dollar is the enemy of the black people. Mm. So that's one of the wings. That's that's one of the wings that's been clipped on it on it on this eagle called ADOS, right? You know what I'm saying? And also now, you you know I often quote the Godfather, but um, Don Corleone, the older one said I think to Michael Corleone he said it's good that you're not he said something along the line it's good that you're not careless because only women and children can be careless it's not that how can I put it it's not that women should be seen and not heard for me just me personally it's that men understand well, I ain't going to say just it, there's consequences for shit. And a lot of those consequences in the physical world go to the physical realm. And the ones that's right. supposed to take care of the goddamn physical realm is the man. So when it comes to that outside shit, outside enemies, whether they look like you or whether they look like others, 
You know what I'm saying? When it comes to those situations, I think it's best for men to do it because we understand we we are built for the consequences that come because we are not going arguments. And this is one of one of the pieces that uh, a lot of us don't arguments are. How many arguments have have been necessarily settled by uh, a peaceful means and shit? Arguments are a state of escalation that's moving to something else. You understand what I'm saying? Because by the time, in yeah. most cases, when you're arguing, and you, man, man, I mean, you know it, I know it. I mean, it's been situations where, where in a sense, we had to kind of step back because it's like, dude, I know where this shit is going. At some point in time in an argument, whether it stays verbal or it becomes physical, somebody's going to back down, and that might mean the person who's dead. And you said that might mean the person that's dead, right? In, in, in those cases, it's a choice. It's the person that's dead, and in some cases, it's the person that, that's that's wise. And in, in, and in a lot of cases, it's, it's the coward. See, but oftentimes, we get caught up in this bravado. We get caught up in this bravado, and, and we go to battle over, over shit that is not worth it. Do you understand? You know what I'm saying? And then oftentimes we are propelled because of other people who don't have skin in the game. Because I keep going back to that. Because a, a lot of times in our community and in the stuff that we're doing, if an individual has skin in the game, they're not liable to just put individuals in fucked up situations. Why? Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose an important part of who I am. There's a possibility. Some people don't understand that shit. You know, you know what I'm saying? Some people don't understand that shit. So if I'm getting in an argument with another man about a parking spot, I have to really evaluate. Is it worth... Is this parking space and my ego really worth what I'm about to invest in this shit? Because if I get out this car because this motherfucker cussing at me, is it really worth it? And then, now, this goes back to the intrinsic value of, of the ego type thing. You know, the ego, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not living in fear. You know what I'm saying? A parking space. Somebody bumping into you. Certain words that's being spoken in certain situations. You understand what I'm saying? It's like, yo, is this really, is this really important enough? Is this a high enough state that if I go out or I take this motherfucker out, right? Is it going to leave a statement? Is it going to leave something of value for my family that they call, you know what I'm saying? Because 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 my daughters can't hug, a, can't hug a reputation. You know what I'm saying? Like I be hearing niggas talking about this, these penitentiary chances and shit. I hear that shit a lot. Penitentiary chances. You know, I'm like, yo, and you doing? I mean, I, I'm saying, penit who? You being around men all day? Oh, nigga, hold on. Now, unless, unless there's going to be something. That's valuable enough for me to exchange me being out here and doing what I'm doing and me being in there or me being right here doing what I'm doing and me being in the ground because I have no problem. I have no problem making those choices because I have made those choices before. But I want people to understand the level that uh, what you're talking about, where it's coming from. Somebody, somebody who come up out of an environment where shit gets volatile, and you might need to be able to grab. You might have to have access to a motherfucking piece. And shit is getting more and more volatile, like by the day, man. Like just today, my 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 best friend, my brother. You know what I mean? He uh he getting married. I'm the best man. 
He sent out a text today to all of the groomsmen. Well, yesterday, actually, he sent out a text to all of the groomsmen. And it was, I know them all, but they they all my dogs. You know what I'm saying? We've been all been friends for 15 plus years. You know what I mean? But I didn't, one of them, I didn't have his new number. So I text like, yo, who this? And then I didn't realize he didn't respond until today. So he said something back and I called the number. We was kind of like bumping heads, like, who this? Who this? Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You speak first, nigga. You recognize my voice, you know what I mean? Because right. I was moving. I didn't really have a chance to really analyze his voice. But it was like, it was getting tense. Because it's just a whole level of tension out here. It's a whole, like, yo. I'm telling to them, yo, don't fuck with me right now. If we squad, if we team, like, yo, I'm ready. Like, leave me the fuck alone, because you might turn into a thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? On accident. On accident. Or with something stupid. Or with something that is not worth. See, because what we need to start being able to do is evaluate our value to the movement. Now, there is a such thing. Um, Nomo told me a long time ago, there is a such thing as cannon fodder. He was, he was giving us a history about um, the Civil War. And he started talking about cannon fodder. And he kept on saying it like, I knew, you know, people in the room knew what it was. And, you know, and, you know, being young and arrogant, a lot of people on axe. But I was that, what is, what in the fuck is cannon fodder? Is this something they put in the cannons? He said, no, no. Cannon, what now? Cannon fodder. Oh, cannon fodder. Yeah. He said, what is so cannon? You pack into the cannon, like, to shoot at people? No. Cannon fodder is the niggas you or, or or the people you put in front of the cannon to catch the shit so your good troops can go while they're reloading the cannons and get to them before they're able to blast them again. You don't put your best troops if you if you look at Hannibal's strategy, you look at Shaka Zulu's strategy, you look at all of the great strategists, they never put their best troops in the front. Those individuals are called cannon fodder. Individuals that are trained to run into the gunfire and, and in a sense, weaken, weaken the enemy by, one, taking up bullets and being able to move and take up a certain amount of space so that right. the rest of the troops can... Huh? Especially back then because people had muskets. So you gotta reload. Like once exactly. that first round of shots is off, then that's when the real games just come out. Oh, is the shit still going on? That's what Marines do. When they talk about storming beaches and shit, do you not know, do you not understand that Marines are trained to die? I mean when you really when when you look at it, you're running the your the name your name is Marine. You come from the ocean. You're rushing a beach. You have to rush a beach and you have to build all the shit that you need to protect yourself while you're rushing that beach. You're taking up bullets and conquering space, which gives other people time, which is my superpower, space and time and shit. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, we into man talk and shit. The lady's probably bored and shit. I know they, nobody got a comment on what what he said or anything that I said. I ain't seeing nothing on the board, nothing. But yeah, I mean, cause like, cause like I said, one, I understand, mm -hmm. understand. Oh, Lady J, that hung up. I understand your frustration, and but we don't want to go to the extremes to where Muslims have their women because our women was never like that. But. We have to be at a place where we are able to understand the balance and the roles that individuals do because you do have you do have some warrior women that are handling it quicker than me and you. But then the shit that we the shit that we have to get out of is this whole flip flop shit. If you're gonna be in Zynga, bitch, excuse my language, if you're gonna be in Zynga, get all the way out there and do that shit. Don't be a zinger and then be looking at me after you done talked yourself into an ass whooping. Please. And I'm going to say this. Since, that, since, 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 since we, I don't know if people is listening that I'm, uh, yo, 
the whole concept of circling the wagons is, is, is squarely on my mind because I'm thinking squad. Like, I'm thinking gang gang right now. I don't know about people in the wagon, in, within the wagon circle, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's a real sharp mentality these days. Of, even myself, like, when I, I can talk about squad, I can talk about, I can talk about the, the, the tribe, and I can talk about myself as a tribe. Like, I'm right. divided amongst myself. So right. it's parts of myself that threaten other parts of myself. And then it's the same, it's, it's like, as, when I look outward, it's the same thing. You know what I mean? It's like, as much as I really just kind of wanted to lash out, I ultimately got to say when I'm when I'm unified within myself, then nobody can, can can shake me. You know what I'm saying? But with that being said, it's also a process. It's also like I'm doing my best to find myself, and I know where my heart is at. You know, I know I know where my but my head is fucked up. And, you know what I mean? Emotionally, I'm fucked up. Like we all dealing with this shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is a this is a, this is a G check to the to the tribe. Like, See, you know, but now we got real, we got real shit going on outside of the wagon. Oh, so within the wagon, yo, it would be fucked up for somebody to get hurt inside of the wagons because because of some fuckery, or or or, or we have to hell possible. we have to go we have to go to war because of a a, a wrong mate choice. Or I mean, see, this is. This is why it, this is why it's important. Like for example, they keep talking about the codes, and so so that so that we could codify the behavior, and, and, and we're moving towards that. And Giamme, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like it's certain shit that are that is unacceptable, totally unacceptable from the outside. It's words that's that's, that's totally it's words and ways of doing shit that's totally unacceptable. But when you start talking about circling the wagons, one of the first things. That we have to be able to do as a tribe, which I'm constantly trying to do. And I'm trying to get people to understand that I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to find ways where we are able to provide livings for motherfuckers. Quasi, what was one of the first things I was trying to do when you showed that you were serious with what, what the fuck we doing? I mean, when I showed up, you wasn't trying to do it. You succeeded. You got me paid. You know what I'm saying? Everybody on my team, I tried to find a way to get paid. I hate asking for donations. I want to ask for dues, and I want to, I want to, I want to help you find a way that you can go on and be able to pay dues. You know what I'm saying? If I don't have, if I, if I have a track record for nothing else, I have a track record of getting my team paid. You know what I'm saying? As Meyer Lasky or whatever his name. Um, and the Godfather say, um, I always make money for my friends. That's that's what I do. And and we have a lot of we have a lot of so called tribes that ain't even see because we understand because in the very definition of a nation, which when you break it down is nothing but a larger is nothing but a large city. And when you break that down, that's nothing but a large community. Which, when you break that down, that's nothing but a large clan or a group of clans. And when you break that down, that's nothing but a group of tribes. And when you break that down, that's nothing but a group of families. And when you break that down, that's nothing but a group of individuals. You All of them fit the same definition. A stable, historically developed community, state, group, with territory, economic life, distinctive culture, language, and common. And a distinctive culture. We got the distinctive culture. We got the language in common. Because right now we building that just by us saying. And I say what's the day? The motherfucker is able to tell me what the day is. In our language. And an economic life. I try to make sure that everybody around me got an economic life. I'm not. You know what I'm saying? Even when people donate. And I hate. I hate the donations in, in this way. Don't get me wrong, family. I appreciate the donations, but I feel that I have to do something or provide you with something because I want you, I want you, when you're looking at what we're doing, I want you to look at you investing in you or you investing in at least a group that you want to see succeed, not you giving. I want us to have some type of exchange if it ain't nothing but me and you having a conversation. 
You understand? And and and, and that territory. All right, cool. We can't afford to buy a, a, a house right now. We can't afford to buy because if you look at the at the original Giami chapter or or the charter, and it says what we were supposed to be doing, we supposed to have a men's house, a woman's house, where initiations and stuff is supposed to go on, and we supposed to have a neutral clubhouse. We can't afford that right now. But what we got right now, we got territory on the internet. I'm not fucking around with this. Everybody else could play. Everybody else could try to get paid. Listen, family, it's bigger than that. Because it's hard for us to say we a tribe if we're not eating. And everybody... I'm thinking about it too. Like, like one of the main things that makes the United States, I don't know, I was going to say Israel, but then I was going to say the United States. It's hard to say either one. I guess it would have to be United States as the backbone and then Israel as... The, the little brother, more or less, even though who knows who called a shot these days. But um, the ally, the Israel would have never been able to, the, the current Israel would have never been able to thrive if the United States didn't support it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So then I think about Giamme, I even think about myself and some of the fuck shit I done got myself involved in, some of the movements that was tearing down Giamme, man. I... I and there's people that may, may or may not be listening and I know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. That it was other movements out here that rightfully should have been an ally of the Giamme tribe that wanted everybody. It's, it's big me, little you, man. It's big me, little you. And it's everything, like, was happening at the expense. Like, this can't be great. I have to be great. That thing, I have to belittle that thing over there because I want to uplift this thing over here. When it's supposed to be like that thing over there is great because this thing over here is great, and this thing over here is great because that thing over there is great. That's not, and they're, they're not operating from they're not operating from a tribe. They're operating from an individual. But go ahead. And then they that shit like, and I'm really literally sitting up here like my whole life balance is focused because lives got changed, lives got created. I'm speaking to Blend me. I don't think the right people is listening. I need to hear this message, but I got so much shit, man. I'm, bro. Something need to happen quick because I don't know how much longer I got out here. I'm about to blow the fuck up. Like I can't hold all this shit in for too much longer. We got to make something happen. For, we got to hey. utilize Quasi because Quasi can't. Quasi ain't got that much longer. Hold on, all that shit now. Hold on. Now, this is what I'm saying. My family, I try to make sure we all eat. We all eat. You understand what I'm saying? This is why the meetings bi-weekly, right, are important for us to come together so that we can eat and we can see that from the fruits of what we've been doing. We've been able to feed ourselves and we're able to go on camping trips and we can see we've been able to, to feed ourselves and transport ourselves because we work. But what happens is that some of us get so caught up in life that we forget that if it was not for this, there will not be that. And that's what fucks me up the most about anything that we do. It, and, 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 and it's like it's like the wings being plucked off the motherfucking ego because we're stuck in the farmyard when we could be so much higher and so much farther than when we are. You know what I'm saying? I'm sitting up here like, damn, you know what I'm saying? You don't you 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 don't realize that you eating because of this shit? It is. It, it amazes me, right? You you hook you hook you hook people up. You put them in situations. They start to eat, and they forget who fucking plate they eating off. So it's like when Giami do some shit. When we do some shit, and we are being able to be able to put in positions because we doing some shit, and motherfuckers are just running off from the table as if. They did the shit by themselves or saying, thank Jesus. I ain't got no problem with Jesus, but don't don't allow Jesus to interfere. What the fuck was going on in reality? I don't like that shit. That shit bothers me. But, you know, as I do, I just. I'm quiet about it in most cases. You know what I'm saying? But I want people to, because we're putting belief energy, we're putting time, we're, we're putting time and space energy 
in the wrong places. Do you know tithes are about you giving to something that spiritually feeds you? I used to, and, and you heard me say this a, a hundred times. I used to tell my boys before, even before any any any, any, any of the current people, I say, listen, brothers, y'all ain't understand, man. I basically. I basically laid out a religion for y'all. All you got to do is this, 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 and this. Let's build. You ain't got to worry about food. You ain't got to worry about none of that. Let's work together. It's going to be provided for us. And and and, and they had absolutely no reason to doubt because for the three for three years before I came out with it, they were eating. Um, I had a brother that used to make fun of me because I said, man, I feed the nation. Come come to my house. It'd be 20 motherfuckers eating. Everybody full. Nobody. You you homeless? All right, cool. We're going to work something out. We got I, we got a system here. Niggas start sabotaging the system. But it's not it's not their fault. It's because they couldn't. They can't. They can't see. And they can't see beyond themselves. Because when you really start thinking tribe, you think bigger. Cause it's like boom, crazy. I need you. I need you to get into the try mindset when when you on your explosion shit. Because how can your explosion will it benefit the tribe or will it hinder the tribe? This is where we gotta be. Cause I be wanting to do some fucked up shit too sometimes. But then I always gotta think: Is it going to build the tribe or is it going to hinder the tribe? We almost five generations deep, if not more than that. Five. And it's like, yo, right now we're doing better than we have ever done. Now, my timing was messed up with what I told you. Because I wasn't thinking. But other opportunities are going to be coming present. But we need people focusing because when we put our minds together and we start working, doors open, man. We said, as Giamme. This ain't hot tip. As Giamme, we get up every morning and we toast our ancestors. I don't know if people really understand that when you act, when you when you are participating in something like that, you actually have that energy around you. People be like, oh, you ain't supposed to fast without water. You can't go no 21 days. Motherfucker, I toast every day. You mean to tell me my ancestors can't get me through this shit? Are you kidding? Are you kidding? This is what this is what we dealing with the the mind state of 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 atheists and people that actually don't believe in shit that's reaching for straws looking for something to work looking for some big material thing rather than being able to see the small blessings that land right in front of them. Listen. Man, and, and like I said, right now it's coming together because like I said, I the way we moving as a tribe now, Sister Navita called me the other day and said, opportunity. Opportunity. I said, opportunity. Blah, blah, blah. We ain't going to get into it. We ain't going to get into it. And, and, and she can tell you about it over there. We was able to move on that shit immediately. Whether it work or it don't work. We was able to put up the money. And then. You know what I'm saying? I'm able to say, I'm able to look at the team and be like. I'm able to look at the tribe and be like. This, this money ain't shit. We can get this. Now I got people like. Oh okay cool. Let's do it then. Hell Malcolm X Festival. You 200. You 100. You 200. Boom boom boom. Family is able to produce that. Come on now. What the fuck can we do? I'm sorry. You can't let me go off. Brother Kwame is on the line. I've been cussing too much. He he he, he calling in the, the pull the, the, the pull the reins in. Go ahead, brother Kwame. Um, you know I was just thinking about uh, the uh folk tale and as you guys were pointing out, context is everything. So, if you think of 
animals within the setting of Rudyard Kipling's The Jungle. Uh-oh. <clears throat> uh, the Jungle Book, excuse me. <clears throat> they had an understanding amongst each other, the animals did, where people still got to eat, but there were there was sacred ground um and basically you just you couldn't act on your very own accord mm. and if you did there was punishment um so there's that context in which to think of uh, the story and reciprocity is in order so that's that's the critical piece when reciprocity is in order that's when the junction the jungle <clears throat> excuse me, the animals of the jungle understand themselves that they're one and a part of the whole. Um, and if anyone gets out of hand or misbehaves, there's consequences because that's reciprocity. And on the other hand, in the sense that if you uh, understand yourself to be one and part of the whole of, uh, let's say, that, that eagle's... Uh, Said, then his being free would require him to reciprocate and his uh, offering of the uh, the rabbit was his attempt to do so now on the other uh, hand if you think of it outside of the jungle a book the jungle book and the animals understandings that they had with each other then we get into what you were stressing, Hot Tim, in the sense that, uh, you know, Brother Mario Beatty makes the argument that, uh, and, and others have, have as well, make the argument that Ma'at is only functionable within your tribe. Mm. In other words, mm. what you were saying is don't extend the rules you have within your tribe to the understanding that those outside your tribe will have that same, you know, those same rules. So that, so that, and Go ahead. No, I man. Now, and I want to. I want to stress this: reciprocity is economics. Reciprocity is the original. Re, reciprocity is economics and one of the reasons that we, we we suffer in our communities in many ways is because we don't practice reciprocity with us right right you know what I'm saying we we, we, we expect the bad shit to come but we don't we don't want to practice reciprocity not realizing that we start small flows if it ain't nothing but pennies if we exchange pennies if me and Kwame exchange pennies long enough we get a flow and other things start to come in, and when you start it, as they said in that one movie, uh, House of Dreams or House Fields or whatever, if you build it, they will come. Markets are built. Feel the dreams. Feel the dreams. The, the, if, if we start, when, once we start that, this is why I keep on telling people, well, why don't you make Giami a, a nonprofit? Because I'm not, I don't want us to get caught up in. Seeking money out there first. I want us to be able to raise money for ourselves. Because before even, like with the Malcolm X Festival this year and last year, before we even talk, before we talked to the elders, we was able to come to the table with what this is what we're able to produce. Reciprocity. We're giving this to the community. Can y'all match this? Or can y'all help with this? And the community give back. And, it, and although it starts off small, it always starts as a trickle. As m- The more you practice that Maya and really believe and work that Maya principle of reciprocity. Because it's a universal, it's, it's, I mean, I'm quite sure Kwame can give you an equation that possibly could show reciprocity for real. It's a real thing. You know what I'm saying? And... And that ego, as he said, the ego was practicing reciprocity. You gave it to me, so I'm going to return to you. So now our debts are clear. So it is a possibility that ego could come down there and, and, and kill that man. Because I don't pay my debt to you. I don't owe you shit. You ain't in the ego family. You, you, you pray. 
Ain't there, ain't there 42 laws of mine? The, now, there's 42 negative confessions of mine. Well, now they only call them negative confessions. 42, uh, what, what's the term, Kwame? 42 uh, affirmations. 42 affirmations of my eye. There's 10. Right. But there's really only seven laws, though, right? Exactly. I'm glad you said that like that, because there's only seven laws. The, the hermetic principles are the laws, right? Seven. Yeah. Give me an and example. I, what, you that uh, what laws do you mean? Uh, I'm, I'm not necessarily sure. Hermetic principles. I can't think of all of them. I know the first one is all is mental, and then it's like the no, laws, uh, duality. That's hermetic. And, that's not uh, hermetic. Sexuality. That's not myotic. That's that's hermetic. That's that's right, the hermetic. Yeah. That's the hermetic law. What you're talking about is the truth, justice, righteousness, reciprocity, balance, order, and harmony. But then also you have uh, um, uh, not all is mine, but um, control of thought, control of action. Devotion of purpose. So, those are referred to as the comedic virtues. Those are the virtues. The laws are are the laws the seven. So we got ten virtues, yeah. and then we got seven. We got the seven laws. Are they called yeah, laws? I'm not, I'm not familiar with you know that terminology, so I I can't be sure. Okay. I mean, you know, when, when, he, when, he start, when, when Quasi starts off with, uh, you know, all is mental, um, when I think of the development of at least our understanding of the development or even redevelopment of the quote unquote uh, understanding of the universe. That was one aspect of that understanding. Right. But then it starts to develop and incorporate uh, the understanding of how, uh, uh, hell, I'm, I'm real rusty with this, but let me not lie to you and just say that that understanding begins to develop. So it starts and you knew uh, what... Uh, when I say you knew, I'm talking about once the ancient areas of uh, Kemet. So it starts in you knew, and then it develops more in uh, Manefer, and then it reaches its highest development and what becomes Waset. <clears throat> and so you have, uh, and they don't contradict each other, although a cursory understanding might, you know, lead one to believe that they don't contradict each other. They build upon each other, including what, what, what came before, but including that and then building upon it. And so, you know, that's, uh, so when you start off with all this mental, I think of how, uh, that understanding of, uh, some, some would call it spirituality, but I, I tend to stay away from that term in, in, in these regards. But their understanding of how the universe works. Right. Now those now the the all is mental is attributed, at least in this in this in this realm or this world, Western world, to the Hermetic text. The Maya piece that we talk about a lot of times is truth, justice, righteousness, reciprocity. What are those called? What's the term for that? Truth, justice, righteousness, reciprocity. Uh, my out is truth. My out is just. My out is... Uh, right. You know, they just refer to them... I mean, you can refer to them as attributes. Attributes, uh, okay. You know, and various other, uh, you know, things. But, uh, but yeah, so... You know, that's, that's all I can give as far as my understanding at this point. That's dope how you said that. That's all I can oh. give my, my understanding at this point, too. Yeah, me too, for real. <laughs> I mean, I, I've been meaning to commit it to memory, the, the, the hermetic principles, because I, 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 I want to... I, we had I a chart here, Jeremy, for you. Enough to sit down. We had a chart here at Jeremy for you. We got a calendar. Each day 
I mean, if you listen to each day, I cover um, a mon- a monic- um, demonic aspect of the day. Like today will be <laughs> justice. Um, you cover the hermetic. I cover, cover the hermetic. Today will be correspondence. So the ones you're talking about is all is mental or mentalism, correspondence, vibration, polarity, rhythm, cause and effect, and gender. Um, those are hermetic laws. Of course, we know my is truth, justice, righteousness, reciprocity, balance, order, and harmony. Then we got the um the um and Guza Saba, of course, is what you know what I'm saying, what brings us up to where we are. And you could and you see a slight connection because that's that's gonna have to be one of the classes so that you can start understanding the connection. Yes, that's what I wanna do yes, that's what I wanna do. I I so wanna do a class on that. Because I feel I was already like I had, once I started reading the um the Magic Letter, I started to make overlap. Between, like, the first thing that caught my my, my attention was the, um, the comedic deities, like Heru. Right. And then the, um, what do you call them? Uh, Nature? The other like Nature? Chongo. Oh, you talking and about... Which, the Orishas. The Orishas. The Orishas, right. The Orishas and the comedic deities. I started to study the overlap between them. And then I even took it to the Nguza Saba. And saw some overlap there. There you go. You know what I mean. And then, and then, so then I started to look how numbers even started to build on their, on each other on them on themselves. Right. The process so through which they become the next number. Right. And that explanation was so it was so profound. I kind of got away from it. You know, I haven't thought like I used to. I, I've just been looking through my journal. And that's all I wrote about for for a period of time, and I haven't been able to really do that. The, the next step is the, the hermetic principles, because I feel like the hermetic principles is kind of maybe the oldest, and it, it feels like the oldest. It feels like the most like basic, like everything kind of develops from that, like thought and talk or whatever that whatever you Dude. know how you said. I mean, yeah. Uh, the Greeks refer to him as Toth. Uh, uh, but Hermes is the Egyptian medics. Uh, no, right. Jehudi is the is you the medic. Je- Jehudi or Jehudi, Tehudi, <clears throat> um, and uh, when you when you get into Hermes, then you're getting a Greek a Greek understanding of okay. what they came across um, because there was no Hermes before. Jehudi. Right. And I want to stress this. This is where what I'm talking about far as the story, looking at the cultural differences, because the Greeks did what they needed with the deities. The culture did what it needed with the deity. Right. And in a sense, this is the same thing we see with these stories. These stories did what they needed with the stories. If you put somebody in slavery and then you release them, there's a good chance that they're going to come back on you so you might as well keep them in slavery. That is what the last story tells you. You you can't release somebody from slavery and not ha- and not watch your back. Even if you help them. And this is what we're dealing with over here. But we, we want to, like I said, because the part of the danger is because we haven't embraced our culture all the way, and we on some universal shit. We thinking that everybody is 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 mentally dealing with the world in the same way we are, which puts us at a detriment and which puts us in well, jeopardy. Well, 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 well. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Hello. No, again, I no that that idea keeps coming up in our conversation, and that is within the tribe, you practice those things, you know, that promote the tribe. Right. Uh, my art my art works fine within our tribe, but when you try to universalize it to, let's say, your enemy. You in trouble. You know, hell, that's the reason, that's the reason for diplomacy. Because you understand that your enemy does not have your interest at heart. Exactly. 
And even, I mean, and then we go to like Marcus Garvey. I talk about this all the time. It, in the little blue book, it was a little book. It's a little book that's white and blue. I can't remember the name of it. Somebody out there I know, somebody out there in Jeremy Journey know the name of the damn book where uh, Marcus Garvey tells you exactly what a diplomat is supposed to do. And he says some one of the one of the skills that a diplomat need is lying. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, and it's like, yo, we we miss all that shit. We don't understand that they do it with us. Okay, I'm gonna vote for for the such and such, and they get in the booth, and in private they do their own thing. You know what I'm saying? Not understand. We're understanding that. Okay, for us, word my word is bond. As an individual, that works perfectly for you if you're just an individual. Your word being bond is not good for the goddamn group. If you are making a deal with somebody outside of you, right. somebody outside of our collective, your word is not motherfucking bond. Uh, and again, that goes to, you know, those three critical words, uh, Hatem, that you constantly remind us of in terms of honor. Lord loyalty and sacrifice. and sacrifice within the tribe and maintaining that honor requires that integrity that you were speaking of uh, uh, earlier um, the loyalty piece I mean I mean you constantly speak of that um, and you know uh I I I, I deem myself uh, a loyal individual. Uh, Very. And uh, you know, and so you know, but these are the things <clears throat> that we build amongst ourselves. These, this is part of the codification of Jinyame. You know, those three things, <laughs> and and in, in one can break it down so that they encapsulate all of my eyes. There you go. All of the Usa Saba. Without, but, without clashing. Yeah. Without clashing. Right. Right. But when those things are extended outside the family, um, naively, then, you know, you, well, I mean, look, look, look at our economic practice. That's what happens when uh, those principles are extended outside the family. Shit, that's horrible. Yeah, it's horrible. It's horrible. But we, as a tribe, we got to come up with a staple for them. We got to come up with a staple for ourselves. We got to come up with a staple and something that we, as as, as uh, you know, uh, because like in Jeremy, because one of the things that one of the things I do had because when because when, a lot of this shit just pops out. You know what I'm saying? For years, it pop out in conversations, and 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 we 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 will write it down because I'd be talking to different people and be like, honor, Lord, sacrifice. But whoa, what is honor? Honor means you place something above something above yourself. You know what I'm saying? You hone yourself, or you sharpen yourself, or you become skilled at what you're doing. Loyalty. What is loyalty? Loyalty is 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 sticking by the side and being with your people, and being with your brothers and your sisters at all costs. Right, and but but one of the things that I had to do when I was writing about loyalty was I had to look at how loyalty was being used against us because we gonna be naturally loyal. I ain't gonna even say naturally. Some of us, some of us are loyal more loyal than others, and this is what happens: we get pulled into some bullshit by somebody who's not loyal, especially when it's operating outside the family. So they'll get they'll get in beef or they'll get in trouble outside the family and our loyalty to them will drive us to get in a fucked up situation with them. So the one thing I had to qualify for for, for some of the young people I was working with is loyalty is first to the family, then or or the tribe, the nation, whatever we call it. That that is the key loyalty. Now, what you have to measure when you're dealing with people in your life is 
if your loyalty will take you outside of the principles of my eye, are you practicing loyalty? If me rolling on them motherfuckers down the street is going to take me out of my eye, right? You my boy. I done connected with this group. We got all certain principles. I have a role. I have a purpose. But you my boy. I grew up with you since you was young. Give me the pistol. I'm going to go down here. We're going to blast on these white boys or these these boom, 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 um, nigga, oh, this, this, this opposite set. Are your actions... Truly loyalty. Now that you with us. You went outside. Of our group. And you did something that. Put you outside of my eye. But inside the group. When we roll. We are in line with my eye. What does that mean? That means. That we have in a sense. The universal forces that are back. And even if they're just imaginary. I want y'all to think about the power of this. Even if it's just imaginary, right? There is no hesitations in your actions. Because when you know that you're acting in right and you're doing right. Family, I feel sorry. See, this is why a motherfucker, because I'm, I'm going to be very clear with you. This is why a motherfucker could run into a middle of a mall with a vest, with a vest, Full of explosives and pull the shit without hesitation. Because they believe that what they're doing is right, not only for them, but their explosion. Crazy, listen, their explosion benefits their tribe. So all my brothers, when I'm talking to y'all, I'm trying to I'm trying to get y'all to understand. Listen, I need you training. I need you training young people. We got young people that we need to be concerned about. I know you mad. I know shit kind of fucked up for us, but we could make it better for them and we could guide them so that we could be at 65 and get pulled over by a police officer and a motherfucker want to harass us. And we hold on. Let me call my lawyer. Hold on. Let me call my city representative. Hold on. Let me call the governor, motherfucker. Okay, cool. I'll be out in 12 hours. Not even 12 hours. Matter of fact, the jail person that 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 books me is gonna be like, look here, you going wait out, go go to a hotel or something. We'll call you when it's time for you to come in. Uh, there's a contract here. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, okay, boom. Everybody like that wasn't fair. That's not just. But this the same shit. This the same shit that all these rich families been doing. They've been doing business. They've been doing business amongst themselves for a long time, and they make it hard for you to do the exact same shit. Why? Because that's when success is bred. When y'all practice over and over again and exchanging money. So one of my sons marries um, one of your daughters. One of your daughters married one of my sons and Navita's grandson and, and, and my grandchildren are hooking up because we keep it all of that money together and we're keeping that cycle of reciprocity going. What the fuck do you think is a royal family? I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's not hard. This shit is not hard. These motherfuckers ain't got a lock on this shit. As a matter of fact, this motherfucker's out their control. It's out of there. It's out of control for them. But family, it's a we approaching. We approaching uh uh ninety eight minutes. God damn it! Y'all know I gotta cuss. And like I said, we got some <laughs> we got some major announcements to make. I'm gonna have to call the tribe up on the line probably sometime tomorrow, maybe over this weekend. We can sit down, we can chop it, chop it up because we have a, a possible major event popping off. But we're having some major roadblocks, right? Um, not necessarily fuckery, but pretty close. Um, that we have to work out so that we could go and pop this thing off. And um, uh, family, I want to thank everybody for joining us. Once again, be looking for changes. It's coming at the end of this, you know, probably in the next couple of months, in the next couple of weeks. And then also, um, 
because we're going to streamline. Um, be on the lookout for our July newsletter. If you haven't got the, um, the June newsletter, it's on the timeline. Get the newsletter. Let us know what you think. Help us improve. Help us, help us, help us grow. Somebody just, just a FYI, in our NBHB, we called them the seven laws of my eye and the ten virtues. Right. But you heard Kwame. Kwame, the older brother in this. So they're not, they're not laws, they're attributes. So, um, we'll, we'll fix it. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, this is a process. And, and you know what, family? We get better by being wrong, God damn it. All right? I'm wrong all the time. I'm lying. Y'all, y'all. Like you, go ahead. Like you were saying, man, we, we hone each other. That's right. Sharpen. Sharpen each other. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and place each other and lift each other up. So shit, dude. Hey, you know, like I said, there's a change to be made in the goddamn handbook. Who wrote the book? Somebody on, on um, Simba Circle, Giami Chapter. Who wrote the book? I'm quite sure we got enough influence to get that old motherfucker to change that. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Family, I got to get me some soup. Uh, well, actually, it's broth, but I got to get whatever it is. I got to get it. And, uh, uh, and and go to bed. You know the girls got to go to the camp tomorrow. So family, I want to I want to remind you, and this is this this is a strong reminder. Listen, nothing ever changes the world, but a stubborn minority. We are that. So I'm screaming for reparations. I'm screaming loud. You understand what I'm saying? Who is this on Symbol Circle Giami chapter? It only could be you know, it's only a couple people that it could be, but I'm screaming reparations until until I'm buried. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just saying, I I need my wings back so I can soar. Fuck both of them. I'm just being honest. I'm you know the the the, the holder, the captor, and the benefactor. You know I might try. I'm gonna be like the ego. I'm gonna. You deserve this big, this big, big hair. But I'm flying away. Oh, it's the traveler. What's up, bro? How you doing? So, uh, uh, stop. Why are you so shy, man? You don't call in no more and shit. You know, but it's cool. But uh, anyway, family, this is the home of the stubborn minority. Where the congregation of the mighty gathers. Where your hustle builds muscle. This is. Giami. Journey Media. Of course, you know this is a Heart of a Simba production, and we have killed another folktale for grown folks, even though there still should be questions and ideas that's flowing about this folktale because we got into some other issues, and y'all have to understand that sometimes just having the conversation will spark other conversations. So you can't always be striving to be in control of shit because sometimes some of our family members got shit they need to get off their chest so that we can make sure that everybody's healthy. That's part of us honing each other. It's all of a simple production. Well, we strive, strive, strive to blow up your old paradigms. Say, and I am out. And we will be developing a, a seven-step course. Peace.